Hello, I am your host, Lesher Frondel, and this week on This Week in Painted History, we'll be discussing the works of famed photographer and artist, Lenart Carencius. Carencius, who passed away but seven years ago today, lived to the ripe old age of 1,012. Researchers were able to procure his withered and severed buttocks for the Victoria and Albert Museum before his body was shipped to the X Games 16 per his final request. Now, over the course of a millennium, Carentius depicted in vivid and stunning works of art the rich and troubled history of the East Pacific nation known as the Papaya Dominion. Today, we take a unique journey back through this history, through the eyes of an often disputed genius. The year is 998 AD. Lenart Carentius is born to parents of northern Denmark, who will soon be some of the first colonists on the island of Darpia, the present-day Papaya Dominion. Scrawny, fearful, and allergic to most tree nuts, Carentius was not able to he was not able to be a warrior, like most of the other Viking children. The position that Carencius is put in here is so fascinating, as he's, he can take one of two career options, either an artist or a volcanic sacrifice. And so, flink, in 1015, he takes up the brush and he gives the world his first masterpiece, the founding of the Dominion. The story behind this painting is the classic adventurer's tale. A group of perplexed seafaring Vikings managed to sail from Denmark out into the Atlantic, under the southern coast of Africa and into the Indian Ocean, where they then proceeded eastward to discover an uninhabited Pacific island and believing it to be Sweden, raise it to the ground in a cleansing fire. The founder's fire burned any and all sustainable crops for the new settlers and had been listed among Forbes 25 most impulsive raisings in world history. The small population that survived in these harsh and self-inflicted conditions came to form the inexplicably named Papaya Dominion, whose etymology traces back to unknown slash suspected logistical error. In the 14th century, when the nation became embroiled in two concurrent wars, Carencius found immense success as a military painter. King Harold I begins a war of aggression against the Swedish people. And old Lennart is brought in to paint beautiful works of the glory of battle. Now, due to the immense distances between Sweden and the East Pacific nation of Darpia, this was a primarily aerial conflict fought with the nation's elite squadron of battle-trained pigeons. This painting depicts the bloodlust customary of these pigeons. Now you'll notice an unfinished quality of the work. Just know that at this time, Carinthius was 347 years old and could barely move his limbs. Harold's expensive and bloody war of conquest drove resistant leader Oscar Pasco to challenge the king on the home front in what became the Papaya Dominion's civil war. On the night of independence, 1388, King Harold was defeated by both the Swedish and resistant forces, effectively ending both wars. This was a rough night for Harold, and he died of disappointment. Following the bloody civil war, Carentius sought to foment unity among the disparate sides by painting a new national symbol this beaked wizard in khaki pants. This famous painting served as the basis for Zachary Matlov's portrayal of Mobius Havoc, the popular villain from the Steel Hands franchise. Over the next four centuries, which included the 300-year reign of Oscar Pasco and a century of British colonial rule, Carentius took his infamous hiatus from visual arts. Many attribute this to his complete and utter loss of dexterity. However, Carencius says that he really wanted to focus his energies on what's really important, appearing dead when in reality, he is only sleeping. Carencius's return to the world of visual art is often attributed to two factors. First, the invention of the camera allowed his ancient, nearly skeletal form to capture an image in a matter of seconds. Additionally, he began his union with the much younger muse, Amethyst Drake, their relationship famously providing the basis for the Woody Allen film, I may be old, but at least she's hot. Political upheaval during Carenzius's third era eventually moved him away from taking candid photos of Amethyst Drake's neck, and he became the official photographer for the Dominion's presidency, taking many significant photos of the nation's attempt at democracy. Josiah Kettlebrower was the first president of the Papaya
Aya Dominion from 1846 to 1852. Carentius's portrait photo for Kettlebrower was meant to evoke his everyman's status and a humble beginnings as a poison tester for the local magistrate. Of course, providing the story behind the musical smash, could you give that venison a taste? You relieve my dread to see you see of ungrateful courtesans always trying to poison me. Next was Gordon Poppyseed, whose portrait highlights his lack of understanding for political intricacies, or anything at all for that matter. A lack of understanding with which he was able to secure the largest constituency on the island, the pity boat. Following the first presidential temper tantrum, he was allowed to stay in the office for six additional months, pretending he was president alongside Mr. Lawrence Palau, who, under the tutelage of fake President Poppyseed, degenerated from an expert political strategist into a 28-year disappointment in chief. Carentius ended up leaving the position of official government photographer when Bertram Baylor came to office, who he saw as a threat to his nation. In response to this incredible disorganization of poppy seed and Palau, Baylor had framed himself as a new kind of candidate and ran on the platform of limited freedoms and oppressive government. He said if he was elected, he would be the first feudal lord of the nation and rule with an iron fist of tyranny. He was wildly popular. Once Baylor was elected, the motto of the Dominion changed from liberty over tyranny to we put the eft in fiefdom. It is the only instance in recorded history where people elected a self-proclaimed feudal lord because of widespread public annoyance, and it too was the final straw for Leonard Carentius, who protested by not moving his limbs for another 112 years. In 2010, at the age of 1,012 years old, Leonard Carentius, who was not the spry young 450-year-old he had once been, asked the citizens of the Papaya Dominion for permission to die. His request was granted on the condition that he depict on the canvas his own death. Notice now the unfinished quality of the painting. You're looking at the work of a true master. Beloved by the nation that he helped become the leading international manufacturer of birthday-themed coasters. Thank you for joining us this week on This Week in Painting History. And stop by next time when we ask, are mirrors paintings? And if not, who wants to know?